Last here we week, are. I thought I was going to get eaten by a crocodile last week, so I wasn't here. But I'm here. I've survived. Right I've survived the Florida swamps, and I've returned. And uh, we're here to talk mules and donkeys. We're not here to talk gators. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear about the gator that changed. Talk you about around. the gators. We'll we maybe we'll get into the gators a little bit uh, a little bit later on. But hey, folks, my name is Dave. This is Steve Edwards, and uh, very excited to have you joining us today to spend a little bit of time talking about your mules and your donkeys. Uh, every Wednesday, we get together for about an hour. And we talk about how you can gain trust and get results with your animals. And really, uh, if you can gain the trust of your animal, you are halfway there of getting the results that you want. And so we want to make sure that you cross that finish line and get the joy out of uh, being an equine owner that, that you deserve and that your animal wants as well. So the way this works is... Um, I just wind Steve up and let him go for about 60 minutes. Uh, no, you all provide <laughs> questions. Uh, but before we get to the questions, we just ask everybody to uh, let us know that you're watching. So if you are watching, uh, all I'm going to ask is that you uh, let us know that you're there. Put in the comment section where you're watching, your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather is like. And uh, we want to greet you. We want to say hello. We've met so many amazing friends through this program over the years. I, I don't know. This is our third or fourth year doing this. And so we've made uh, amazing friends, and we would like to meet you too. And if we've already met, we'd like to say hello. So put your name, where you're watching from, what the weather's like in the comment section. Second thing we ask, anybody who has watched week after week knows uh, that we ask you to uh, make sure all, any and every mule or donkey question you have gets asked in that comment section. Uh, no questions done. Uh, there's no question that we have answered too many times. Uh, no question yeah. is really off limits. Um, we've had uh, everything from uh, folks, uh, you know, disagreeing with some of the methods that we talk about here, and and so we're we're fine with that. We've had folks uh, ask questions about the tack and and wanting to know. You know, Steve, is it really like you said? So nothing is really off limits. We don't back away from anything because it comes back to that main value. We want you to gain the trust of your animal and get results in your training. That's that's yep. what we want more than anything else. Well, almost more than anything else. We want you to know the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But that there aside, we want you to gain the trust of your animals and get results with your training. And then the third thing is that we ask that you share the broadcast. So if you're watching on YouTube, it's very simple to do this. You just click like on the video and then click subscribe. That lets YouTube know that, hey, what these guys are doing on Wednesday, it's uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, maybe y'all should show this to a few more equine owners. So if you do that, that helps us with the YouTube algorithms. And then if you're on Facebook, it's very simple there too. You just click the share button and put it on your page and just tell folks to come and hang out with you and uh, that it's free. And that it's awesome. Make sure you say that F-bomb in there, free, and that it's awesome. F-bomb. Yeah. And then uh, and then you can also tag friends and family members in the comment section, just like any other post. So, Steve, how have things... I was in Tampa last week, but uh, you were around. How have things been over the last week? Well, we've got a big storm in last night, and uh, we actually got almost an inch of rain, which is always welcome. I've got a sign out by my gate, Dave. It says... A new mule and a good rain is always welcome. That's my favorite standard. Yep. New mule so, and a good and you rain. You were in take Florida care. having alligators. Yeah, I was in Florida. I had a friend who couldn't attend an event, and uh, and so uh, you mentioned it here or there. I run a I run a marketing business, folks, and so um, uh, this marketing business, I've been learning about communication and the internet and sales and online stores and everything for you know, 15 years now. And so one of my friends had a ticket to an event, a very costly event and uh, said, Hey, I can't go. Would you like to go? And so me and my wife uh, flew to Tampa. We had about four days uh, where she just kind of relaxed in the hotel room and I did the event and it, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad to be back. I uh, didn't get a lot of great sleep. So I was glad to get back, get home, see my boys. And I'm glad to be back here. So what do you say we start greeting folks and then get into some questions for the day? Let's fire it up. Let's fire it up. Herman is watching. Good to see you, Herman. Uh, hi, guys. Weather uh, starting to get nice in Arizona. I can confirm it is starting to get nice. Cowboy Ken is watching from Connecticut. 66 degrees and the sun is going down. 
fire. Do y'all get in uh, Connecticut? Uh, uh, Ken, do y'all get um, fireflies? I loved when I was in the Midwest and we would get those fireflies. We'd go out there with the, the glass jars and we'd catch them all in the glass jars and we'd poke holes in the top so they could breathe. Do y'all get those? Uh, Fiery Waco is watching from North Texas. Good to have you here watching over on the YouTube. Nancy is here on Facebook. Glad to see you both. Nancy and Donkey here from Mountain City, Tennessee, 72 degrees and rainy. That's not fair to the man in your life calling him Donkey. He has a name. No, I'm just giving you a hard time there, Nancy. It's good to have you here. Misty is watching. Misty from Signal Mountain, Tennessee. It's a mud fest here. So much rain. Uh, well, maybe that's... Uh, is it okay to ride in the mud with your animal, Steve? Oh, yeah, that's fun. Matter of fact, we like to take and put people on inner tubes and tie a rope to it and dally up to the horn and, and see how muddy they can get. Well, there you go, Misty. Now you've got an activity after we're done here. Don't leave before we're done. Hang around for the whole time, then go out. Chris is watching. Good evening. Uh, Michelle is here from Lenore near Montreal, Quebec. Beautiful day. And Canada, that means we have gone international. Thank you so much for taking us international, Michelle. Polly is here from Barnesville, Minnesota. Beautiful day here. Had my Wednesday ride this morning on my mule cookie with my trail light saddle and pad. The bit and breast collar bought from you guys. Such a nice ride with your tack. We love hearing that. Thank you so much, Polly. Chris says, good evening from South Mississippi. Mountain high hunters. Hey, guys, great stuff, and I'm all ears. All right, just like any good mule or donkey, all ears. Fiery Waco's got our first question of the day. Says, question. Snaffle bits can cut tongues. I have seen picks. It's horrible. Why would one be used over a bozal or a hackamore? Well, very few people understand how to use a bozalis or a hackamore. A mechanical hackamore is a wonderful tool. A bozalis is a wonderful tool, but it's not to be used on an everyday basis. No. Uh, can a mechanical hackamore be used? Yes. But I have also seen noses destroyed because people use a hackamore, bozalis or a mechanical hackamore incorrectly. Mules are very, very sensitive. They get that from their daddy, the donkey. And that's why uh, I always tell you to do your ground foundation training using the come along rope because it communicates to the nose. So let's go back. Why did the tongue get cut? It's not the snaffle bit's fault. No, no, no. It is the rider's fault because here's the problem. The, the horsemen like to use a smooth snaffle bit. Everybody thinks, oh, smooth snaffle bit, that's really nice and easy. No, no, no. It cuts tongues, which he just got done saying, okay? So why does it cut tongues? Because of the your hands, your hands are used incorrectly, incorrectly. There's the problem. Now, you see where my hands are? Okay. Now, I'm getting ready to go right. That's all my hands move. But what do horsemen do? What do so many people do? They over pull. To, I want to make my turn. No, no. Wonder why your mule braces on you? You wonder why your mule runs through the shoulder? Because you're over pulling. Look at my hands. I want to go to the right. I turn my wrist. And then I go to the right. That's all. That's all you need. Eventually, one hand I pick it up, I go to the right and to the left, right and to the left. Do not use a smooth snaffle bit on a mule. Do not use a, a smooth snaffle bit with a dog bone on it, okay, with a little deal in the middle. All that's going to do is make that mule brace. That's why I developed the Mule Riders Martingale. I use a double twisted wire bit. And if any of you see my demonstrations, and Dave can probably – Put oh, one up on I, the. How yeah. about I bring one up right here, Steve? How about I, I, I play it? All right, let me uh, let me get this. We can see how I. A lot of times I'll use like a little girl, and I'll have her hold on to the bit, and and I show her, and you could just see me move my hands barely, folks. 
The bit is not the problem. The problem is your hands. All right, so we've got this video right here. Let's see if this is a good one. I'm loading up my pickup. The double twist here. wire snap here bit go. simply because I capture the tongue on both sides of the tongue rather than a single snaffle which captures the tongue in one place. So put your Look fingers at that on that young here. man right there, okay. Steve. Now this is the tongue of the yeah. mouth. When, this, when this, this is inside of the mule's mouth, it looks like this. It's just laying here. When I want to say, whoa, I pick up on both sides of the ring, and you can see then the snaffle goes on both sides of the tongue, and then they put the pressure, and you can feel the pressure, and then, of course, the animal says, well, what can I do to be comfortable? And as soon as he stops, I let go, and the bit comes back into place. Okay? Unlike a snaffle bit, which is just one single, when it's the pressure, feel the difference in the pressure? That's a lot more pressure there with just one single than it is with a double that goes on both sides. Whole lot more comfortable. Even though the bit looks a lot nastier, looks a lot more uncomfortable, it's phenomenally comfortable, okay? Which you just saw. Now, put your fingers out here, the two fingers. Now, let's just say I want to go off to the right. So this is gonna be like the violin bow on the violin. When I wanna to go to the right, the mule or a horse feels, just keep your tongue in one place, feels that. You feel that? Okay. Okay, so it feels, and it says, what can I do to be comfortable? And as soon as his head goes, my hands get quiet. Get the idea? What can I do to get comfortable? As soon as his head goes, my hands get quiet. Feel the difference? Okay, so I want to go a direction. I'm uncomfortable. As soon as you go that direction, my hands get quiet. Feel the difference? Okay, so it's very, very important we understand that we must have the proper bit to do the proper job. There we go. Yeah. That was at the Phoenix Zoo. Yeah, it was. The program I did there. Yeah, that was see, great. see what I'm saying. See what I'm saying, folks. That double twist to wire snap a bit goes on both sides, both sides of the tongue. Where the normal twist wire, when the normal bit goes like this, and when it does that, as it dances across the tongue, it cuts the tongue. Why? Because you over pulled it. That's why <laughs> if all you did was turn your hand, you wouldn't have the problem. But horsemen don't. They over pull. That's the great thing about my mule riders, Martingale. You barely got to move your hands to get communication. Awesome. Great question. Uh, really great question to get us started here. So yeah. uh, let's keep moving on. We've got uh, Courtney watching from Michigan. Went for my first ride off-site trail ride. That's awesome. First off-site trail ride. Congratulations. Uh, Ken says they do have the fireflies. All right, catch a few for me, Ken. That's awesome. Julie's watching from Mount Vernon, Washington. Tonda is watching from Dayton, Ohio. Hi, guys. Happy Wednesday. Um, around the seams, Ron and Virginia watching from Berg Hill, Ohio. Weather is 80 degrees and humid. Got the come along coffee and it is awesome. Every even my mule Daisy wants to taste it. <laughs> I'm gonna go uh, going to try all the roasts. Got the ask, tell, demand. I'll put a link in the comment section here in a minute. Uh, we've got Rob watching from Queen Valley, Arizona. Just watching. You guys are great. Rob Sports Cycle. Uh, Mountain High Hunter is watching from Sholo, the mountains of Arizona. It was beautiful sunrise after lots of rain last night. Stacy saying hi from Colorado. Beautiful, 73 degrees. Great to see you too. Esther is watching from Switzerland. We have gone international again. It's rainy. Uh, Julie says, I had a horse that had badly scarred tongue from being bit up. So Julie sharing there. Uh, Carol says, my young gelded mule likes to hop up on the other horse's backs. I'd like to pony him alongside a horse. How do I stop this nasty habit without him resenting me? And as Steve goes ahead and answers this question, folks, go ahead and ask your question in the comment section and make sure you say hello. Steve, how do you get this uh, mule to stop this nasty habit? How old is the mule? Why, why would it matter how old the mule is? Because when they're younger, they're a lot more playful, especially when they're between um, the one and five-year-old range. They're a lot more playful. That's play, folks. Okay, so now, what would I do? Come along, Hitch. Come along, Hitch. Folks, you cannot do enough come-along work groundwork. I don't care how well trained your mule is. 
you can make him better, absolutely better by doing groundwork. You know, two so two years old. Two yeah, years old. That's would, how old. Two years old? Oh yeah. He's just being playful. You see, he's he his his castration hasn't told his head yet completely. He's still got, you know, some thoughts. And so I, I, I'm assuming she said he castrated him, right? A young gelded mule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's kind of a norm. They'll do that all the way up to their five threes, usually when they quit. But get the come along hitch. And when the mule starts to get up, starts to climb up, give them a bump with the come along hitch. Awesome. Great question. Uh, let's go over to our first question that was uh, sent in. This one came from Courtney. Um, actually, that one, I want to summarize that one. Let's go to this one from uh, one of our friends in, I think it's Kenya. Let me take a look here. Um, yes, from South Africa. Good day. I absolutely love your page. It is loaded with information. I live in South Africa. Uh, where mules are very scarce. And after nine months of intense searching, I bought my mule. Congratulations. Hey, welcome to the family. Uh, I am a first time mule owner, but I'm very excited. But I'm very worried about getting a saddle after all your videos. I don't want to harm or hurt her with the wrong saddle, but it is very safe to say that mule saddles don't exist in South Africa. What is your suggestion to the next best saddle to use and what should I look for when buying a saddle? So uh, obviously we don't sell mule saddles. That's not obvious. We don't sell mule saddles. Obviously we're going to recommend Steve's saddles. Uh, but in this situation, there might be some concern about shipping because it can be pricey to ship internationally. You got to save up the dollars. Um, so Steve, go ahead and 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 go and, and answer our friend here from South Africa. Yeah, that's well, thank you very much for, for, for tuning in from South Africa. Good for you. I have sent some saddles to South Africa. Uh, matter of fact, we've got, uh, I forget the name of the program now, but he does uh, a lot of exploring and they use donkeys as well. But anyway, it's, it runs about $350 for shipping to ship one there. I wish I could tell you, hey, you can use this saddle and away you go. I have beat myself to death for oh, close to 50 years trying to figure out what's best to make that animal comfortable. And here's the problem, folks. These animals brace into pain. That's what they do. So we don't know if they're in trouble until it's too late. Uh, and remember Dale from, uh, from Texas, helicopter pilot, he kept getting bucked off. Well, what was the problem? Well, it ended up that the saddle that he had been using and the saddle that the guy before him been using had been banging on the scapula. It created a little color flower type place on the scapula. And every time you put any saddle on there, the slightest bump, the mule would go into hyperspace. He finally got to where he had enough. But before that, it kept building up, building up, building up. And so now it's at the place where it is. Uh, where he, you can't ride the mule. So they, they use it for driving. So going back, I wish I could tell you, partner, uh, what to do as far as uh, getting, a, getting a saddle set up uh, there in, uh, in South Africa. Uh, we I, we, uh, we, we kind of have a fun thing that we tell folks, we don't sell mule saddles. We sell only Steve Edwards saddles. And they're completely different than all these, quote, mule saddles. We hear it all the time. I had a guy tell me the other day, I had a saddle made. It had mule bars in it and I've still got these problems, you know, and, uh, and yeah, you will, you know, because I said, if you think it's, it's going to work on a mule, we want to do three things. Does it have three billets, one on the right front and two in the rear? If it has billets, it's not made for a mule because they don't understand that the back cinch must be the tightest, front cinch must be the loosest, but they're trying to treat the mule like a horse. And that's one of the things that they do. Now, the other thing, the back of the saddle, see if the back of the saddle is open in the back, you'll see my saddles are open and you'll see them be up high, up off the, off the uh, spine. I had a guy call me the other day. He says, I, I want that saddle set down lower. 
You may want to, but the mule don't want because the mule is going to be made super uncomfortable. Well, I can put my horse saddle on there and it sets down low. Well, good. I'm glad it will. Go ahead and try your horse saddle for a while and see what happens. He actually said he did and it worked pretty good. And I said, well, go back and, uh, and use it for a while and see how long it takes you before your mule has had enough. But anyway, that's the best, best thing I could tell for you, partner, is that, um, uh, if you tr if you're going to try, especially uh, there in South Africa, don't try those English saddles. They've got to have a rear cinch in order for them to work properly on your mule and your donkey. So right here, we've got a saddle. Um, Evenly distributed right the cinch. Here. So, plus, on top of that. Let me pause it real quick. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at one of Steve's saddles. And then we're looking at a second saddle that appears to be a Steve Edwards saddle, but is it really a Steve Edwards saddle? And this is Steve talking about, you want to look for it broken up in the back. You don't want it sewed up in the back. Let's take a quick, a I quick don't have to here. worry about pulling up on it and, and jerking it and making them sore. I put go. pressure upon that spine. Don't change the design. Everything here is meant to be able to keep the animal comfortable. That's really, really important. Pulling collars. Oh. Every, this is an older cowboy. Notice how the back end is closed up and they put a crouper ring. I've never put a crouper rings on any of my saddles. Now here's the downside. Notice underneath here how it's been sewed up. So that's going to rub on the spine. And we've got a couple different mules here I want to show you. You'll be able to see what it does. So there you go. And what happened was when we went out there, this was in Mesa, uh, the client the, the client that we were with said, Steve, I got one of your saddles and it's, it's sore in my animal. And Steve goes, well, it's not one of my saddles. He goes, no, it, it's one of your, it's one of your saddles. Okay. Well, we'll have to take a look at it. And sure enough, it was one of Steve's saddles that had been adjusted and that was sewn up in the back. And there had been other modifications that had been made. Steve mentioned in that video, the crouper ring, there were some modifications that were made up front as far as uh, pulling collar uh, had been concerned rather than using a fluid collar that allows for the motion. So uh, just a couple uh, visuals there to see what Steve's, uh, what Steve's talking about. Let's keep moving on. And uh, we've got uh, Rocky watching from West Texas. Tonda asked the question, can I use the come along rope on my five month old? Now we're assuming this is a five month old animal and not a five month old child. So if that's what we're talking about, Steve, can we use it on a five month old equine, not a child, not a human being? Absolutely. You know, you just won't do quite as much with them. I can tell you, I've taken baling twine to these babies and they are still in the placenta and I take them out of the placenta, get them stood up and they're kind of standing there wobbly. I put the come along hitch on them and I tip their nose to the right and I tip it to the left and I bring their nose forward a little bit and I get them used to that. So I've done it as soon as they're born. Uh, use that come along hitch. Folks, the come along hitch is more important than a halter. A halter is going to create good things if you adjust it correctly, but don't think that the halter is going to do the job. It's not. The come along hitch is going to take and get your animal good and soft and supple. Six months is the average foundation, folks. When you're building a foundation, you build a foundation for six months, four to six hours a week, and that's all over a six month time frame. Don't use it for a little bit and say, okay, I'm done, and then go ahead and put a halter on. No, no, no. Your baby, these babies under three years old, I hardly tie them up. I teach them to be ground tied using the come along hitch. They'll stand there. You can see a lot of my videos to where I've taught them to be ground tied and they will not move because they've got so much respect for that come along hitch. Now I go back to my favorite shows on grit. Everybody that watches grit right down in the section down below say, I watch grit. There it is. Now watch them. When they ride in, do you see him take the, the bridle off and put the halter on? No. They tie with the rein, put two loops around it. Why is that? Because those horses are halter trained correctly. And they've got so much respect 
for the slightest amount of pressure on their head, they will not pull against that rain. But it's got to be done correctly, folks. Listen, that, and just watch them. When they ride up, they climb off, they throw the rain around the hitching post and walk off. Yep, that's the way they're trained. At my ranch, we come riding up to the hitching post. I'll oh, sure. I'll teach them to tie to a hitching post. I don't like it, but I do it. Okay, it's part of life. The way I do it, it out here in the desert, we have no trees to tie to, folks. So I drop one rein on the ground, and on the left rein, and the right rein goes up on the horn. Now they can't get their head down to get a bite. They have so much respect for that rein, they will not move because they know it's going to bump them. All right. So watch that. You'll see that on your grit. Now notice on the other thing on the grit, I'm going to point out how they get in the saddle. You never see them grab a hold of the back of the saddle and the horn and climb up. You never see them do that. You see them put their hand on the horn, hand on the mane. Don't cut the manes off your mules. Don't do that. Hand on the mane, hand on the horn, jump up, put your foot in the stirrup, climb in. When you're short like I do, I am, you put them in a, in a ditch, uh, an old wash, or maybe have a fender to climb up on a trailer, or maybe like I, I even teach my animals to step over to a, a, a little ladder <coughs> and climb in, okay? But I always put them down in a low place. When you're five, six, and now I'm 200 pounds, back when you saw that other video, I was <laughs> 160 pounds. Anyway, there you are, Dave. Here we go. Right here, you remember this one, Steve? Oh yeah. You're talking about uh, getting onto the getting onto the saddle there, folks. This is uh, is this Eric Lynn? That's Eric. Yeah. This is Eric Lynn, and uh, he's in Colorado, uh, Mountain Ridge Gear. If you like Steve's, if you ever seen Steve in the original ATV. Oh um, wait a minute! This ain't Eric Lynn. This is that Eric uh, Palmer. Palmer. Eric Palmer. Okay. Uh, it's the Eric Palmer's here in Arizona, uh, but yeah. yeah, no, no, no cinches, uh, yeah. no cinches, no, um, britching the saddle and the saddle pad just stay right there. And, uh, and you can see them get on and get off with everything right there in place. So, uh, just and a fun little video to show. Up. What's that? The cinches aren't cinched up. Yeah. They're yeah. Yeah. They're, it's, it's, it's just the pad and the saddle there on the back and, stays in place. It makes a huge difference. Um, all right, here we go. David's watching from Port Angeles, Washington, 54 degrees off and on again. Rain, he says, break from cleaning up the old McClellan saddles. Good to have you here, David. Myra is watching from, uh, let's see, greeting Stephen Day, finally cooler weather here in Southern California. Good for riding. Get out there, take some pictures, Myra, send them in. Julie is watching from Clayton, Washington. Roger is watching from Milan, New York, cloudy and 62. Kevin is here. Hi, Stephen Dave. Nice afternoon here in Kansas. Can't wait to get in that saddle tomorrow, he says. David Pingelli, Mr. Come Along Coffee himself is here. And uh, it's good to have you here, David. We're going to send some come along coffee orders your way. Uh, Jenna is here watching right in the middle of Iowa, overcast but pleasant. That leads me to our next question. Uh, this one comes in from Kat. Kat sent a message over in on Facebook, and uh, I've got it for you here. What saddle pad do you recommend for a donkey with higher rump than his withers? Why does it matter if you have a higher <laughs> rump then the wither, Stephen, is there a saddle pad you would recommend? <clears throat> that would be a downhill hip pad. And Kat, you just ordered a uh, an 03 pad, which is not a downhill hip pad. You need the downhill hip, which is the QV011. Anyway, so when the hip is higher than the wither, the saddle wants to run downhill and into the wither. Now, I've had some people, different people tell me that they've used their horse saddle just with a regular pad. Well, that's fine. That sets down in, you bet it does. But then when it starts banging on that scapula, it will be a problem, okay? So yeah, we need to, we need to put the uh, downhill hip pad in your box. Uh, you, uh, I just loaded it up this afternoon. It's gonna ship it out tomorrow. So uh, 
give me an email back and say, hey, change pads. Awesome. Uh, good. We caught that. She sent that in late uh, late yesterday afternoon, so I'm glad we were able to get it on the show today. Yeah. Um, I'm having fun sharing some some videos here, Steve. Uh, do you remember the saddle pad video uh, that you did all those years back? Um, the demonstration that you did out there on the ranch saddle pad and folks are trying to move it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let me see if I, I got that right here. I'm going to bring that up. Folks who haven't seen this will get a kick out of this. Uh, right here, we were out doing a see, clinic on no, the ranch. There's no lip on the back of the Cheyenne roll. But, and a wool pad. Um, hold on to the wool. I shot that sucker right off with ease, you know. And try to push it off. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hold on to the back of the saddle here and push on it. Nope. Yeah. All right. Now, here's here's the other deal. You go ahead and get a hold of this fender and pull that saddle off there. Isn't that something? Yep. Now, here, no problem at all. You see? So why do I want to have a wool pad? Not only is it sucking the moisture right out of my animal's back, but I've got to tighten my cinches so darn tight to make the saddle stay in place. And you can't do that with this, you know? And as you can see, they're both on just, you know, regular old stand, you know? I ain't got it attached to nothing. And it flat makes that saddle stay in place. So we never got in, Steve never got into the business to sell things. It was just couldn't find the things that worked well for the mule. And so one thing led to another. Here we go. We've got uh, uh, a, um, a pack saddle. One thing led to another. Hey, here you go. Here's a riding saddle. One thing led to another. Hey, here's a saddle pad that's designed to accommodate the 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 hip of the mule that's a, a designed to accommodate uh, the the shoulder the shoulder shape so it's fun sharing these things a lot of folks probably haven't seen them um, so you know just bust them out a little bit here or there uh, yeah. let's see John is watching from Tonto Basin good to have you John Julie says occasionally my donkey stops when I'm riding I let her look around but every once in a while she doesn't want to move forward again I generally turn her in a circle to get her moving. What are your thoughts? Number one, folks, don't turn your donkeys and your mules in circles to get them to move in or get them to stop doing something. Don't do that. And let me tell you where you don't want to do that. Is that the Grand Canyon? Mm -mm, mm -mm, don't want to do that. On the side of a mountain? Nah, not a good deal. So uh, are you wearing spurs? If not, why not? Everybody, when you're riding, everybody should be having spurs. Everybody should. Uh, so that's it right there. When you start taking them around in circles, folks, you are going to start having them get pretty upset. I had a client several years ago. She had to have a helicopter ride out. Why was that? Because the people that were selling mules said, look, when this mule becomes a problem and won't stop for you, Take them around in circles. Well, now here is a new mule owner who knows very little about mules. The guy that was selling the mules went ahead and left her alone. Should have never done that. So the mule started to go and took off running. They're hollering at her, hey, take them around in circles. He started taking them around in circles, and the mule then ran through his shoulder and threw her off. Anyway, long story short, don't do that, okay? Don't do that. For if you want to stop one, right brain, left brain, right, left, right, left, and then increase the intensity. That's how you get one to stop straight. Now, going back to your donkey, uh, when he wants, to, when he does stop, use your spurs. Right, left, right, left. Right brain, listen to me. Left brain, listen to me. That's how you do it, folks. It's imperative you ride with spurs. They'll get over it. They'll be fine. Now, how do you ride with spurs? Ask with your calf. Tail with the side of your stirrup. Demand with your spur. You'll get to where you barely close your legs and the donkey will go. Don't think, folks, you have to bump them with the spur all the time. You don't. Just squeeze your legs. Ask, tail, demand. Keep that in your mind. Always think about that. When you're going to communicate with them, Ask, tell, demand. So ask with your calf, tail with the side of your stirrup, demand with your spur. Now, your spur is going to depend upon 
you the rider and the animal you're riding on. I got some of my spurs that I have got, have got a, a rowel right here and it comes down to the, to the boot. And I got some spurs that are straight. I got some spurs that come way up like this with a rowel on them. Why is that? Because sometimes my leg is longer and I got to come up to his belly to bump him. Or sometimes I'm sitting on a big mule that has straight sides. Then I can use a straight spur and hit him. So I use different spurs depending on how I'm riding. Awesome. Uh, Y'all, we did a, a, a video uh, last year or the year before. I can't remember. Uh, of me and Steve talking spurs. There were a little bit of technical difficulties during that event. Um, but for the most part, the content's there. I just put a link in the comments section. Uh, Y'all can go check that out. It's free. You don't need to sign up for anything. It's there to watch and uh, uh, will be helpful. Steve goes through a bunch of different spurs. This next question we got, this one comes from Courtney. Uh, I've been in touch with you recently. I have the 2.3 hand Molly Mule Dixie. Uh, I should add, Steve, I had this on cue for last week before I discovered that I didn't have fast enough bandwidth. So uh, it's been sitting here. You may have talked to her. I just yeah. have a couple of questions. I'm hoping you can give me advice on or direct me to on one of your videos. My mule is very well trained. She's polite, listens to commands. She's respectful. And most of all, she's got great disposition. I'll tell you what, I would like this behavior for my three young boys. That's what I would like. <laughs> this sounds like a dream right here. Uh, yeah. listen to commands, polite, respectful, great disposition. Get that from my three boys. Uh, she says, great disposition. See, I've been reading your educational material, Steve. However, and here's the butt part, the butt mule. She does not like to be saddled. I can catch her okay with some treats and get her tied. But as soon as I break out the saddle, uh, in saddle pads, she gets really wiggly trying to move away from the pad. I know she's been ridden in the past, but how much, I'm not sure. How do I begin getting her to at least be comfortable letting me put the saddle pad on her so then I can take the next step and saddle her? She's also cinchy. I think she knows just what it means and I think she knows just knows what it means and what is coming. The past few days, I've been catching her with uh, with purpose. I put her rope halter on and then get, she gets to doing something fun, graze in the grass or go for a walk. Uh, while she's doing that, I also put my bareback pad with my cinch on her. Um, let's see, am I doing the things right? I give her some bumps when she starts moving away from the saddle pad, but, as she, but it, until she's quiet. But as soon as I make a move with the pad, she's moving away again. She doesn't have any white hairs, no pain, just an opinionated girl. Uh, sounds like my wife, and I love her just the way she is. Please give me some direction on what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, and what I could be doing better. Much appreciated, Courtney in Michigan. I think uh, we had a mention about Courtney in the very beginning of this. She was getting ready to saddle up, and she was going riding. If it's the same Courtney, I think it is. Yes, I've talked to Courtney, and, and I have several people in this same position right now. Uh, Courtney's got about a 12-year-old little black meal, good-looking little meal. And uh, I've got some others. Chad, he's got a two-year-old coming up on three-year-old that he's trying to do the same thing. These are very, very sensitive mules, y'all. They're sensitive to the touch. They know that when the saddle pad goes on, the saddle's going to go on, and guess what's going to happen then? They're going to be cinched up, and they don't like it, you know? Some, some of these animals can be very, very, very sensitive. Um, and we call them cinchy. We also call them cold back, cold back. And what usually is they're just so sensitive that the, once that saddle gets on there and you cinch it up, give it a few minutes before you climb in the saddle. Matter of fact, we used to even take them and have them go around in circles, right and left. We didn't lunge them. We just took them around with a bridle and went to right to the left. Got them warmed up a little bit, climbed on and rode. Uh, another thing you might want to do is also once you get the saddle on, always use the come along hitch, by the way. Don't use the halter, folks, to train with. Don't do that. The halter is not a training device. Can I bump it once I've done my foundational training after six months with the come along hitch? Yes. 
but the halter is not a training device. Get that in your mind. You can get some things done, but your foundation training must be with the come along hitch. So I've got the come along hitch. I've got it in my left hand. I bring the pad over. Now it's your timing. If the head comes up, it's too late. You should have already been bumping, but we're thinking, put the pad on. No, watch what the mule is doing. The head's down, everything's good. Put the pad on. When the head comes up, bump, bump, bump. Fix it before it becomes a problem. It's too late when you're already trying to put the pad on, it's too late. When the head elevates, the mule, the donkey is saying to you, I have a problem. So therefore fix your timing, get your timing into place, wear your gloves, use the come along rope, uh, and bump them. You know, as soon as that head comes up, bump them, bump them. Now it's okay to move them ahead a couple of times and then, and then stop them again and start over again. But it's, I, I can tell you, it's kind of funny. I've seen some of these where they, you can put the harness on them and drive them in a wagon. They're fine. No problem. Put a pad on them, put a pack saddle on them and they're okay. They'll put up with it, but you're going to put a riding saddle on. Uh-uh, uh-uh. They don't like that at all. And, but they are the very, very sensitive. They're sensitive to the touch with your legs. They're sensitive with it when you tie up the cinches. Very good. Uh, great question. Uh, let's see here. Moving right along. We've got uh, Julie says, thank you. Tony is watching uh, Port Angeles. So we've got another Port Angeles here. Uh, 52 degrees and raining. Richard Messenger says, good night. Well, good night, Richard. I hope you have a great night's rest. Linda, the mule servant and Theo, the sweet one-eyed mule in gloomy rural central Ohio. Sorry to be so late. Hey, you know what they say, Linda. Better late than never. It's good to see you. Even better to be seen. Glad that you're here. Uh, let's see. We got a question here um, from uh, Ron in Virginia. When you adjust your britchin for riding hills, do you lower it for steep downhills and raise it for steep going up hills? Uh, what's the what's the protocol there, Steve? On elevate and can you just leave the britchin the same elevation if you're just kind of like just a little bit? Can it just stay the same? Hey, remember folks, when you put a breaching on, you put it on when the mule is on flat ground. When you're coming down off of a hill, the mule gets his hind end up underneath him. And then guess what? The breaching is now loose. Guess what? The breaching, the saddle now goes forward. So uh, don't completely depend on the breaching. What I usually do, I tell myself, I got a pretty steep hill here. I'll reach down and I'll tighten up my cinch a little bit and not, not a bad steep hill, but it won't take me like two or three minutes to get down. Always make sure your back cinch is the tightest. Do not depend upon that bridge and to hold it back. Otherwise you'll be adjusting the bridge and all the time. It's your back cinch needs to be tight, tight, tight. Your front cinch needs to be loose. Remember you adjusted everything for flat ground. Now, I've got a really steep mountain. Yes. Then I loosen everything up and I left the mule adjusted the side straps and I'd lower the breaching and then I come off that long old mountain. Okay. Like at the Grand Canyon it takes us four and a half hours to go down. We lower the breaching so that the mule will set on the breaching and hold the saddle back. Uh, Y'all, I put a link in the comment section to something we call the Mule Saddle Training Course. If you are looking for the perfect ride, um, you know, there's so many different factors that go into a great ride. And a huge, huge portion of that is obviously the mule but and where you're riding. But on top of that, it is the equipment that you use. It is how that equipment interacts with each other, how one piece interacts with the other piece, and how you position that equipment on the animal. There's a lot that goes into this, into, into an enjoyable ride. And so we put together what we call the mule saddle training course. It's a collection of 12 or 13 videos. Uh, it's all free. You can, that, there it is right there. That F bomb again, it's all 
free. You can go to Mule. Well, I put it the comment uh, link in the comment section. Go uh, get access to those videos. Um, some of them are real short and real to the point. Some of them are a little bit longer. Like there's a 26 minute video in that collection where Steve actually uh, shows you, gets everything saddled on, and then uh, repositions and readjusts the saddle as he leads the animal around just in a couple circles. And you see the amount of movement that happened with that saddle just from his initial uh, cinch up, couple circles, come back, and the saddle's already moved. And the cinches have already, uh, you know, moved a little bit here. And so it yeah, goes yeah. through that process. So you see exactly what you need to do before you, before you get out there. And, there, and there's quite a bit. And, and when you do it right, it can be a lot of fun. Uh, well, Linda one thing said, they can do yeah, yeah. too, Dave, is they can take a four foot level <clears throat> and kind of put it onto the wither, wither and onto the, help, the hip and see how much that level moves, see how much that bubble moves. It'll give you an idea of, of how your saddle is sitting level or not. Very good. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Um, Linda says, always late, but worth the wait. I'm going to steal that one, Linda. I'll give you credit, of course. Uh, Michelle's watching says, hi, are Molly mules moody? Are Molly mules moody? Yeah, it can be. Uh, in the spring of the year, when they're kind of coming into their cycles, they can be moody. Uh, John mules tend to be really playful. <laughs> yeah, kind of dinks. Uh, but yeah, they can be moody. Uh, is there anything we can do about it? Nope. I've heard and tried all kinds of stuff. I even had some people tell me about um, give them a little chocolates with some um, mm, marijuana in it. And I've heard them try that and said, nope, it just made them local. Uh, but I, uh, I, they can be moody. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. So uh, you weren't too far off there, Michelle. Thank you for asking. Uh, Ron and Virginia say, thank you, Steve. I was a little confused about Britchen adjusting for steep hills. And you know what, Ron and Virginia, get that mule saddle training course. If you don't already have it, I think you'll be very happy with what you learn. Levi is watching, says, hey there, coming in late from Albert County, New Brunswick International again. Good hey. to hear from you today, Steve. What's that, Steve? Yeah. He's, uh, I, I talked to Levi today. Uh, yeah, his girlfriend actually uh, contacted me and wanted to know if I had a photo that I could sign and, uh, and send it to him. And I said, sure, I've, I've got some photographs back when I was with Best of America Horseback. I've got some nice big eight, uh, eight by tens. Yeah, eight by tens. And I went to go send it and it was $30 to send it, 30 bucks to send it to New Brunswick. And I says, I don't think you really, really want to do that. She says, no, I'll pay it. I'll pay it. I, I didn't want him to have the picture. So I use the internet. I use the Dave Sheen Shrine uh, <laughs> guru stuff, Thank you know, you. and I put it on my, on my, that's a copy machine. And I put that picture then on on my email. And you're proud of me, right, Dave? I'm a guru now, man. I've got and some questions after him. we get done here. I've got some things I need some help with. Yeah, I sent it to him. I was, I was looking for a picture of it, you know. Yeah, I've got uh, this. I've got this webcam here. This one was glitching in and out. Maybe you can help me figure out what my problem was with this webcam here. I had these pictures done, like. 25 years, I don't know, not 25 years ago, about 15 years ago. How oh, cool. You see here where I signed it and I sent it to him, you know? How oh, cool. Yeah, it was fun. So there it is. That's my buddy. That's Levi. And he's he's uh, he's using my techniques to train his horses. There you go. Yeah. Uh, he'll be all set for when he gets the mule. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Terry is watching. Hello from Minnesota. Uh, we purchased a former Amish draft mule, 17 hands high, rides and drives, 18 year old, just started to ride them. Are you familiar, Steve, with anything specific to the way Amish train their mules to be ridden? Anything that we might need to be aware of? It's a great question. 
well, they, you know, they do a lot of driving. Uh, the Amish men are, are, are really good uh, horsemen. Uh, you know, just like anything else, folks, they can be hard and they can be soft. It just depends on, on the Amish. But the nice thing about Amish men is they know equine. They do. They have a little bit of a problem. The ones that I've met anyway have a problem with working around mules because mules will outthink you all the time. I've actually had quite a few Amish men come out here on a train and then come from Flagstaff to here on a bus and then go through a couple months of training. And when I've done clinics back in, uh, uh, back, back in Pennsylvania and, and uh, Ohio and this sort of thing where there's a lot of Amish men, they've been amazed at, at, at the differences between the horse and the mule. So really, uh, I would say that the biggest thing that you're going to have is, uh, you know, always folks have them vet checked and I always have them do that, but get a chiropractor to look at the back and the shoulders and the hips, make sure those are good and then get the teeth floated. You should be good to go. Very good. We got a question here from Ellie. This one's a little bit longer. Um, and if you've spoken with her again, this is one from, uh, that we were meant to get to last week and just didn't, uh, hello, I have listened to your podcast for almost a year now. I have had a few mules and have raised one of my own. That's three months old now. So anyways, about a month ago, a friend of mine called to see if I'd buy his mule. She said he was mean and hateful and didn't get along with her. And I know he's a horseman. So I figured it wasn't all the mules fault. She was also full fed alfalfa and a custom a mix of grain corns, uh, DDGs, soy hull pellets, and some kind of grower, aka rocket fuel. He yeah. told me she kicked when she wasn't saddled, doesn't kick when she is saddled, and that just and that she just wasn't friendly in general. I brought her home and got her teeth done. They were very bad. It wasn't quite the or it was quite the ordeal getting her sedated. She kept trying to bite the vet. She has been more friendly since getting her teeth done, and I ordered your come-along hitch package and have been doing that with her. She has not tried to kick me since I've had her. She's been scared and nervous with me, but not mean or aggressive like she was described. She had 90 rides from my friend. He rode her inside and out and even roped off of her. But in the video, she looked miserable to me. She has put some weight on since doing her teeth. I've attempted to saddle her. I haven't attempted to saddle her or anything. Just been doing groundwork and working with the come along hitch. I'm not sure what my next step is. Please help. I really like her and I want to continue on with training her. Well, six months of come along hitch. Folks, you got to get that in your mind. Four to six hours a week over a six month time frame does that. If your friend wrote it, uh, then you should be pretty decent. But I would make sure, you know, like I said, you've already got the teeth done. Have a chiropractor look at uh, the shoulders, the back, the hip, and make sure that's good. And then you should be able to start looking at writing. Always, folks, I like to have someone on the come along hitch when I first climb in the saddle. That way we got full control of things. Very good. Yeah, that's smart. I, you know, I, I, uh, I think I see that at the clinics that we do, but I've never never really thought about that being the case. That's smart. Um, okay. We've got, uh, Lee watching from Maryland. Michelle says, thank you. Terry says, thank you. Linda here says regarding Steve's equipment. I just want to say with all my heart that Steve's tools and tack are not nice. They are necessary. If you had a roofing job to do, you wouldn't show up with a ball peen hammer and a screwdriver. So don't show up to your mule with a nylon horse halter, a long line and a lunge whip. Steve's starter kit. That's the mule ground foundation starting kit and all the Steve Edwards tack will prevent problems and help you and your mule become friends who trust each other. Uh, so Steve really quickly, one of the things she's, thank you so much, Linda. That's very kind. You don't have to say that. And we appreciate that you do. Um, she said something that so you don't wind up with problems. You prevent problems and don't wind up with them. Something I've heard you say before is you, you might think you corrected one thing, but in the process, you have started several other things. Talk a little bit about that. Well, let's just take the halter. It's amazing to see halters, how they're misadjusted. Uh, Courtney, I meant to tell her about her mule. She had it tied wrong on the side 
you know, when you put it through and you adjust the halter, it was tied in correctly. Uh, folks don't depend on a halter. Always do come along work to build a foundation. Always. Right. Uh, when people, uh, they're going, they'll cinch one up. And when they cinch it up, they try to get as tight as they can right there. Don't do that. All you're doing is creating more problems because here's what happens. When you tighten it up, try to get it all at one time, the animal blows air into his, his lungs and blows things out and keeps you from over tightening the cinches. So I tighten it up a little bit where it's just touching the belly, take them around in a circle, tighten it up again, take them around in a circle, tighten up again. Now I'm done. Move off a few more steps, put on the halter, I mean the, the bridle and go right off. Now, the problem with this is, now again, I talk about billets. It's a long strap, about 16, 80, 18 inches long, depending on the mule and, and the saddle. And usually they put them on the right side and two on the rear. When you see that, what happens is, again, you know, we're tightening up the rear cinch, but we have to pull it really tight in order to get up the next hole. When you use a nylon tie straps, it's smooth and easy, like a couple of bullies, pretty nice and easy. So that you don't develop bad habits for the animal. Awesome. Uh, folks, I just put in the comment section, if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you do that. You can click that link right there and it'll ask you if you want to subscribe. And uh, uh, I, th I think you'd really enjoy that. And it'll, uh, YouTube will actually send you a message anytime a new video comes up, anytime we go live. So um, I think that'd be uh, real great. Judy says, hello from Alaska. Hello, Judy. It's good to have you here. Uh, Steve, that's all I've got for this week. It's just before four o'clock. We made good time. I want to thank everybody for hanging out with us today. If uh, if you have any follow-up questions, uh, don't, don't be shy. Uh, show up next week, have them ready to answer or go ask and we'll get you answers or send us a message at support at muleranch.com. We'll get you taken care of. Anything that we've talked about today, tack or saddle or uh, training wise, you can go to muleranch.com. Uh, find out about all sorts of different things there. I'd say about half of everything there is free. There it is again, that F-bomb free. Go to muleranch.com, check it out. And uh, Steve, anything you want to say before we're all done here today? No, you know, uh, our, our buddy Randy uh, from the uh, ranch, he's got some serious problems. He had a uh, uh, horse uh, thrashing him around a little bit when he was trying to get some shoes on him and it knocked his hip out and he's in phenomenal amounts of pain. Uh, matter of fact, I was just talking with Cindy. Uh, he's in the ER right now. Uh, they try to give him some pain medications and this sort of thing. Uh, sounds like me when my hip got, had to get replaced. Yeah. But anyway, we need to pray for Randy. Uh, he's my buddy from the, uh, the, the ranch. And so and I've known him for close to 40 years. Great guy, him and Cindy, but we need to pray for him. But folks, we also need to pray for this United States. Uh, you know, this is, it's the power of prayer will change things. Blessings Absolutely. to everybody. Blessings. Everyone take care. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye now. Bye. -bye. Bye.